This week I'm going to show you how to get a nice white background. Adorama TV presents Exploring Photography with Mark Wallace, where you will learn innovative techniques on shooting a wide range of photography. Here's your host, Mark Wallace. Hi everybody, welcome to another episode of Exploring Photography. I'm Mark Wallace. Well, today we're going to be talking about lighting a white background. Now this came specifically from a lot of questions that were posted on my Facebook page, as well as the Adorama TV YouTube videos. A lot of people saying, hey, can you give us a little bit more information about shooting with a white background? Now, a lot of people have been writing to me telling me that the issue that they're having is shadows on the background or the background is just uh, really nice and white, but the subject is sort of underexposed and doesn't look good. And uh, so people have been asking how to do this with speed lights and people have been asking how to do this with studio strobes. So I'm going to show you how to do this um, regardless of the equipment you have. And so to emphasize that, I am using speed lights and then we're going to do another setup using a studio strobe and I've mixed up the brands. And so the principles of lighting are what we're talking about today. It doesn't matter what gear you have, these will work for you. Now to help me under, uh, to help me teach this, I'm actually going to ask uh, Sharon to come out and you've probably seen Sharon on a lot of our exploring photography videos. Welcome to the show, Sharon. And what we're going to do is uh, walk you through everything. Now to do this, what I'm going to do is first show you uh, the lighting setup. Now I have a single speed light. We're going to do speed lights first. This is a Canon 580EX2 and I've got a Pocket Wizard Plus 3 on channel A, I mean on zone A, triggering this. And so that's our Canon 580EX2. Back here, I also have a Nikon SB900, and this also has Pocket Widget Plus 3 on uh, the same channel, but on zone B, triggering this. That way I can turn them on and off individually uh, to do that. Now I've also set this uh, speed light, I've zoomed it manually on, at to 35 millimeters. And the reason I've done that is to make sure we have nice, even coverage back here. And uh, if you don't know exactly what I'm talking about, watch uh, Adorama TV Exploring Photography, episode 110, Zoom the Light, and you'll learn all about how to zoom your speed light. So that's the setup. Let me walk through the issues that people are having. And so what I've done here is we're just going to work with this key light. I've already metered this. I'll do it again just so you can see. This guy right here, um, I'll make sure it's turned on, is metered at f5.6. So I'll go ahead and meter right there, and that is at 5.6. You can see that. And so what I'm going to do is set my Fujifilm X-Pro1 to 5.6. So I've set that to 5.6. My shutter speed is 125th of a second because that's the sync speed. And I'm shooting specifically with the Fujifilm X-Pro1 to show you that you can do this with any camera. It doesn't matter if it's a Sony or a Fujifilm or a Nikon or a Canon, it doesn't matter. So what I'm going to do here is I'm turning on this flash, zone A. And we're going to take a picture right fast and you can see what happens to the background. So look right at me, Sharon, beautiful. All right, now what we can see is that background falls into gray. And what we want to do is make that background white. Now the reason this falls into gray, and here's one of the pitfalls, is because the light right here is at 5.6, but the light is falling off. It's getting lower and lower and lower and lower. So by the time it hits the background, well, there's not enough light to make that white. The solution, some people think, is to just take this light and move it closer and closer and closer, and that will make the background brighter. But that doesn't work. When you move that light closer, what's going to happen is it's going to get brighter here, but because of the inverse square law, the light falls off, and it actually makes the background darker. It's totally counterintuitive. So the answer is to add a second light. Now this second light has to be at a very specific power. You don't want that light to be too dark, but you don't want it to be too bright either. So if this light is too bright, a lot of that light is going to come flooding back and it's actually going to start adding highlights to your subject and those can wrap around and they can go into the lens of your camera and what will happen is you'll start getting uh, low contrast sort of fuzzy images which we don't like. And so uh, some people think just blast the light on the background, blow out the highlights and that's going to give us a nice white background, but that's not the answer. The answer is to make this about one stop brighter than the key light and no more. You don't want to go any brighter than that. So this was 5.6 so we should have f8 back here. So I'm going to meter this one more time right back here. When I meter that I get a nice value of 7.1 which is just below our threshold and that's what we want. So I can show you this. This is at 7.1. So that's just a little bit under one stop brighter and if I needed to I could go back here. I could adjust this just a little bit to uh, get a little bit more punch out of that 
to make sure it's absolutely white. So we're going to leave that just like it is. So it's just about one stop brighter. Now with that light on, we're going to take another shot and I'll show you how beautiful this white background is. And that's perfect. What I need to do though is I need to turn on this light. There we go. I'm going to take one more shot. All right. Perfect. Just like that. Good. And you can see we'll do one more horizontal shot here. Excellent. And you can see that we have a nice exposure on the foreground and a nice white background on the background. And that's how it works. Well, that is how you do that with a speed light or studio strobes. Just make sure that your key light is metered to whatever you want and the background is only one stop brighter and no more. You'll get great results. Now let's do the same thing with a studio strobe, but now we're only going to use one light and I'll show you how you can do this really, really quickly and get really similar results. Well, before we go on, let me explain to you how the inverse square law really affects lighting a white background by showing you something that is totally backwards from the way that a lot of beginning photographers think. And specifically what I've done is I have a two by two, a small softbox here, and we're just going to illuminate Sharon. And I've already metered this at 5.6. So we're going to take a picture really quickly here. And so Sharon's going to look right at me. Beautiful. Okay. Now we have a gray background. And what a lot of photographers will do is they'll think, aha, I've got a gray background, so let's move this light closer. And by moving that light closer, it's actually going to make the background brighter. Well, watch what happens. I'm going to meter this again. I lowered the power on this because we don't want to fry Sharon's face. Um, and so I'm going to meter this light. And when I do, that meters at 7.1. So I'm going to set my lens to 7.1 so the aperture is the same. And now, we take a background, we take a picture, and that background actually is darker. So the background went from bright to dark when we move this closer. Why? Well, because of the inverse square law, what happens is the closer we get this to our model, we're making adjustments for where the light is right here, and the light just falls off rapidly. And so the closer we get, the closer, uh, the more we have to dial down our aperture, the faster the light falls off, the darker the background is. Now, I know you're thinking, that's not right. Well, let me prove it to you. I'm going to take this light. And I'm going to back up way back and then I'm going to increase the power just a bit. So we still have some juice. Now this is now about 10 feet away. I'm going to meter this one more time. When I meter that, that meters at four. And so I'll set my aperture to four and now I'll take a picture one more time. And look at that. Now the background is brighter. And so the inverse square law can work to our advantage. The bottom line is if we have our model farther away from the light, we can get better results. So we're going to put this principle into practice and I'm going to show you how you can get a great white background using one light. And it's going to be really fast, really easy, really portable. Let's do that next. This next setup is one of my favorites because it's so easy, so fast and so simple. And what I've used here is a seven foot Westcott parabolic umbrella. And this umbrella we've talked about on Adorama TV before. It's very inexpensive. It's about hundred dollars, but you can do some amazing things. And this is one of them. So we're going to walk around this umbrella. Now you have to have a studio light that's got some punch to it. So we're using a D1 1000 watt second light. You could use something that's a lot less powerful than that. Maybe a 500 watt second light. It'll do the same thing. Um, but what this does is I'm actually going to shoot right in front of it. And you can see that this light isn't going to care that I'm here. It's just going to go around me. And that's what you get with a really large light source. Now, because of the inverse square law, what I just showed you, what's going to happen is now this light is going to travel this way. And uh, we have Sharon now very close to our background. And that means that the light that's falling on Sharon and the light that's falling on the background are essentially the same luminance. They're about the same brightness level. And that means that Sharon's going to be exposed correctly and the background is going to be white. This works great for groups. So you can just set up one big light, turn it on, meter, and then take a picture. Now, what about shadows? Well, remember, I'm shooting right in front of this light, which means all that light is on axis. So it is going straight forward. So basically the shadows are going to be directly behind whatever you're shooting. So you can't see them. So it's shadowless, nice, soft light with one big light source. In fact, these uh, big seven foot umbrellas, I use them so much that I have a bunch of them because I just love them. So we're going to take a picture. I've already metered this at F11. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to sit right in front of this and then Sharon look right at me. Beautiful. Good. Let's take a few pictures just so we have some poses. Excellent. 
I'll take some sideways pictures. Good. Now one thing you have to make sure you do is to shoot right in front of this umbrella because let me show you what happens when we move off axis. So I'm going to come over here and I'll shoot uh, just off axis a little bit, nice portrait shot. And you can see as soon as I do that, we've got this really nasty shadow. So you can't do that. You need to be back there. That's one of the pitfalls of this lighting setup. You're sort of anchored right in front of this. But as long as you do that, the shots are going to be terrific. Well, you can see it's very simple to get a nice white background if you know a few lighting principles. If you're using two or more lights, make sure the light that's on the background meters about one stop brighter than the key light, but not much more than that, or you're going to have issues in your photos. And for a really quick time-saving setup, just use one large parabolic umbrella, and you can see that you got some really amazing photos without all the hassle of multiple lights. Now, don't forget to see all about the inverse square law and using uh, zooming the light in and out, and even doing something that's very similar to this in our parking lot studio with just ambient light. Just zip over to the Adorama Learning Center and you can see all of those videos and more. There are articles about metering and gear reviews and you can learn all about using the pocket widgets that we used in this video as well as buying the gear itself. So check out Adorama.com and the Adorama Learning Center for all of your photography needs. So thank you so much for joining me this week and do not for forget to subscribe so you don't miss a single episode in the future. Thanks again for joining us and we'll see you again next time. I've seen a lot of questions posted on my Facebook page and on the Adorama TV. Uh, if you are ready to upgrade your system, we want to help. We can buy your used photo and video equipment and we'll give you an honest, fair offer. Visit Adorama.com for more information.